flawless victory. Hey guys, welcome back to part two of making your resin molds super duper shiny. As soon as I finish with part one, where I discover that painting on the Soriatek resin onto the mold cavity produced extremely shiny results, I figured that there had to be a better way to do this. I don't want to go painting all my individual mold cavities like one by one, like some resin Bob Ross dude. Ain't nobody got time for that. As soon as I published that video, I came outside and looked at one of my newest molds on the printer and it immediately hit me. The mold already has a nice thin layer of uncured resin on it. I wonder if I can use this resin to produce a shiny layer. A couple of quick things about my print settings. I've noticed that moving to a 0.04 layer line and about a two second exposure for my sculpt resin, that is heated by the way, produces really, really solid results. The other thing I've done is add a light off delay or as they call in Chitu Box, a rest before or after retract, I think. Using Chitu Box 1.9 Basic, which is their free version. If you have an Epax E10 like me, you're gonna need to upgrade your firmware to the latest version. Links to all this stuff down below. Once you get Chitu Box installed, here's my settings that I use. Again, you can use these on any slicer, I think. The one thing that I have noticed with Chitu Box 1.9 is the retract after, <laughs> excuse me, rest after retract setting is way easier to use than what it's normally called, which is a light off delay, which involves a ton of math to figure out. Super confusing. This setting, you just plug it in. I have mine at one second. It's made a huge difference in the quality of my print. I want to share that with you guys because getting the best quality print is kind of key to getting this finish. If you have a print that's overexposed, it kind of becomes, I don't know what you want to say, like uh, fluffy or grainy or not as tight, then this method becomes a little bit more difficult and produces not as great results. So seeing that nice shiny coat of uncured resin on my mold cavity made me think that there has to be a way that I can utilize that. So what I found out over the course of three or four molds is what you want to do is take your mold off of the build plate, get some paper towels and rub the top part of the mold, not the cavity, just that top edge and all around it with the paper towel to remove as much uncured resin as possible. So what you're left with is a thin coat of uncured resin inside the mold cavity, but the rest of the mold doesn't have any uncured, uncured resin on it, or if it does, it's very, very small amounts. What will happen is if you hit this with a UV flashlight, it cures a very, very nice, shiny coat of resin inside your mold cavity. If you have any other uncured resin around the mold, it is likely to get cured in this process and will cause you problems. So things you want to take a look out for is if you have like tail cavities, any detail, very fine detail that you have, you probably want to get the resin out of those crevices, which can be a pain. If you have those type of molds with very fine details, you might just want to go to the painting method instead of this one. But this method works fantastic on molds with wide areas that you just want nice and shiny. So you hit it with that flashlight. Again, I just kind of hold it close, run it around all over the place, maybe, I don't know, five, 10 seconds total, just to get it kind of set. Then you wash it like you normally do. I use denatured alcohol for my sculpt and I just kind of swish it around in there and uh, wipe it off and let it dry. You want it to get it absolutely perfectly dry before you cure it. You cure it as you normally would. I use a curing chamber. You can use whatever you normally use. Doesn't really matter. Cure it for 25 minutes, which is recommended for sculpt. And you're done. You have a nice shiny mold. Let's check out what these things look like when they get out. As you can see, it is super duper shiny. This is even shinier, I think, than the painted on resin, probably because this is a much more uniform coat of uncured resin before you actually cure it. Now, I did run into a few problems using this technique. As I mentioned before, details and holes, uh, specifically like a paddle tail, uh, in, you know, you can get too much resin in there that hasn't drained and you can't wash it before this. 
So if you hit it with the light, it's gonna cure in there and cause all kinds of problems. You can try to cover up this area. You could try to gently flush out, but it is an issue. The second issue I ran into is sometimes there's just a little bit of stuff in the uncured resin. Could be a little piece that flaked off at some point, could be a hair, could be any of these things. And so you just have to kind of keep an eye out for those, pull those out with a pair of tweezers or something if you want to. You can always come back with a brush and kind of smooth it out, if you will. What you really want to do is not disturb the overall uh, uniformness of this coat of uncured resin. Hey guys, if you missed part one, it's right here. If you want to see all of my 3D printed lure videos, they're in a playlist right here. Take care and tight lines.